Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I am going to read to you this uh, scientific article I told you I found. It's a peer-reviewed article uh, received at the uh, journal November 2nd, 2012, accepted August 13, 2013. It was re revised, received in revised form June 9, 2013. So... This is from Accident Analysis and Prevention. Uh, the home page is called Elsevier, E-L-S-E-V-I-E-R.com. The title of this is called Testing the Validity of the International Atomic Energy Agency Safety Culture Model by Borja Lopez de Castro, Francisco J. Garcia, Jose M. Pierno, Pierno, Pierro, Pierro, Luca Pietratoni, and Anna Hernandez. So the abstract. This paper takes the first steps to empirically validate the widely used model of safety culture of the International Atomic Energy Agency, composed of five dimensions further specified by 37 attributes. To do so, three independent and complementary studies are presented. First, 290 students serve to collect evidence about the face validity of the model. Second, 48 experts in organizational behavior judge its validity content, its content validity. And third, 468 workers and a Spanish nuclear power plant help to reveal how closely the theoretical five-dimensional model can be replicated. Our findings suggest that several attributes of the model may not be related to their corresponding dimensions. According to our results, a one-dimensional structure fits the, be the data better than the five-dimensional proposed by the IAEA. Moreover, the IAE model, as it stands, seems to have rather moderate content validity and low face validity. Practical implications for researchers and practitioners are included. So, number one. In 1986, the Chernobyl catastrophe led to the emergence of, quote, safety culture, unquote, as a new concept in high reliability organizations, the acronym is HROs, folks, motherfuckers, in general, and the nuclear industry in particular. Experts at the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, analyzed the disaster and came to the conclusion that the occurrences could not be just attributed to human error the technology, or even the socio-technical system. The identified cause was a group of organizational and management factors, which they labeled as safety culture. The report was published by the IAEA in 1986 as Safety Series Number 75, INSAG-1. Since the appearance of this term, all of the hazard industries have adopted it as their banner in their efforts to promote safety in their installations and operations. In quote, Wilpert and Schobel, 2007. During the last 25 years, the IAEA has continuously worked toward the conceptualization and theoretical development of safety culture and the creation of specific methodologies and tools for the assessment and development of strong safety cultures. One of the most remarkable contributions of the IAEA has been its five-dimensional model of safety culture. This model has clearly influenced a sector largely composed of technical professors such as engineers, physicists, and chemists eager to know exactly what important concept called safety culture was, what they should do to assess it, and how they could build strong safety cultures 
capable of avoiding future catastrophes. As a result, the IAEA model has become widely used in the nuclear industry as the main guide to safety culture. So let's see how long we are. I can't see the clock from here. Oh man, five minutes in. I'm going to stop reading. I'm going to just post this up because I want to get it up. I'll read more. I apologize to you. I am so tired, folks. It's 1030 at night. I have a super long day tomorrow at school. I have been nonstop planted the garden. I got in a bunch of free vegetables. This is the cool thing about living in Eugene. There's a guy who does they're this farmer. They, I guess he's a rich guy. I asked him how he, he's like, well, I funded. He's rich. He had servants. He's some British guy who lives here. And he lives a very simple lifestyle, but he gives away free plant starts. And he grows for elderly people. And he, they have this thing called the Reality Kitchen where they help uh, foster kids. And it gives them a first job and teaches them responsibilities, waitressing or taking care of the office or whatever, but it's a restaurant here. And they have all these vegetables and green starts and greens for them. That's what they use. And he was giving away all of his starts. So I got about, I mean, at least 50 or 60 starts of lettuce, bok choy, cilantro, greens, not a lot of greens, but mostly a lot of lettuce for the winter time. Good hearty food that will last through the winter. And I put in some garlic, and boy, man, I worked a lot in the garden. That's what we do here in Oregon. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to come back to this tomorrow night. I am going to read every night, even if it's just five minutes, even if I'm just dead tired like tonight. I'm going to sit in front of this camera and read this article, because as you can hear, it's pretty meaty. So put your courage feet on. Wait till you hear this story. It is shocking. The IAEA basically has been lying, and that's what they proved in this article. So... Talk to you later. Ciao. Put your courage beyond. Forgot that part. <laughs> Ciao.